In terms of Formula One, I think that as long as it remains the fastest cars in the world around the closed circuit, it will retain its unique selling point and it will attract the, the sponsors because the, the global audience is there. People like to drive. People like to imagine driving in a world without speed cameras and police and just being able to, to go as fast as you possibly can. And for most of us in everyday life, you don't have that opportunity, but racing cars gives you that, that outlet. Uh, so if it, if it loses its technology development and it loses its, its uh, billing as the best, the fastest, then um, it will slip. But I don't think that will happen. I just come in, just, sorry, just come to the second part of that question about the US market, about breaking that. Obviously, it's, um, it's battling against things like IndyCar and NASCAR. Um, where does it fit in with, with those sort of um, formulas? Well, I've just had a note here from... Pavel Turek saying Texas is confirmed. I presume that's Texas, America, yeah, as opposed to anywhere else. Um, so we have a Grand Prix then in Texas in 2012, yeah. which is another attempt at getting back into the American market. We have a number of global sponsors that have their headquarters in America. Um, but funnily enough, the, the American fan, the American sports fan, hasn't taken to, to Formula One in the way that, you know, NASCAR is, is on the oval races. You have lots of crashes. You have lots of you know, opportunities to see incident and accident and, and, you know, it's a lot closer form of racing. So I think that appeals to the American market more than, you know, I think Formula One appeals more to the European market, the purists who understand that it's a technology race and that, you know, strategically it's the, the, the thought of something nice happening um, rather than having it packaged and, and, and given to you. It's very interesting and I don't know if there's anyone here from the states but you know things like WWF is obviously hugely popular the World Wrestling Federation is hugely popular in America and you know it's a, these are they're great athletes and all the rest of it but it's it's manufactured it's, it's like a Hollywood movie in many ways and I think that's that's difficult for for the European audience to to sort of get into as much I think the British tried with the, the athletes of giant haystacks and yeah absolutely we had wrestling <laughs> a few years ago didn't we yeah. Big Daddy, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, for the final question, David, um, tell us what attracts you and what gets you most excited about the, bet, the, the Jet Bull brand. Well, the, as I move into this, this next phase of my life, um, you know, having been involved in sports from karting at the age of 11 through until retiring from Formula One, it was 26 years of my life. And, and during all of those years of racing, you always had to reinvent yourself each year each week, each race. So you don't just come up with a, uh, you know, the ingredients for the cake and just keep turning out the same old cake because otherwise someone will come with a new, fresh uh, way of doing it and uh, it'll be better. So I, I come from, from an environment where you constantly have to be looking for ways to improve and, um, and ways to, to gain an edge. And what, what attracts me to, to JetBull is it's, it's young in the market. Obviously, th those of you who are here who've got much better knowledge of the, of the industry will know that. Um, but it has to be reactive. It has to, to try and find a niche. It has to try and find a way to connect with the consumer. And I, I'd like to be part of that journey and, and influence in any way that I can um, the sporting side in the same way that as a driver in a Grand Prix team you, you're, you're kind of like a conductor when the race starts you know you have your mechanics your engineer your strategy guys around you but you have to tell them what you need so I've always said that uh, and this is not rocket science again what I'm about to tell you but I've always said that the, the you know two things that you should never have in life is you should never not have an opinion. You have to have an opinion because at a certain time you've got to make a decision in sport. You've got to say yes or no, left or right, brake or throttle. Um, and the other most important thing is not be stubborn to uh, not change your opinion when someone shows you a better way because sometimes you make a decision in the heat of the moment which is absolutely the right thing with the information you have available to you but an hour later or a day later new information comes which tells you that was the wrong decision so you have to be adaptable and I think again that's key to the market that you're all in here you've got to adapt on a 
hour by hour basis, a daily basis, to, uh, to keep coming up with something new and exciting. So I think there's many parallels. David, thank you so much for, for coming to uh, Prague.